All right, guys. So I'm going to just do a little intro blurb here. Um, we have a couple more people that might be hopping on while I'm talking here. So um, if you guys can all just, those of you who have not yet raised your hands, let me know that you can hear me. Um, go ahead and do that right now. Um, and just let me know that you can hear me okay. Okay, looks like most of you can hear me. Great. So your guys' videos and mics are all off. Um, and that's just so there's not a lot of people talking over each other and all of that fun stuff. Um, and what, how I'll do it is, um, just like last time, if you guys came last time, um, I'm just going to run through the presentation. Um, and if you guys have questions throughout, drop them in the chat. And what we'll do is at the end, I'll go through them. And then if you guys need extra help and you want me to stick around after, I'll be happy to do that too. Um, I was telling everyone before I had a minor, almost a minor catastrophe just trying to get on here earlier um, because my Zoom just wasn't doing what it needed to do on my other computer. And I really wanted to make sure I could share my phone screen with you guys so you could see what, exactly what I was talking about on Instagram. But unfortunately, <sighs> I'm not able to do that. So technology, right? Um, but I will do the best that I can with what I have to work with here. So anyways, uh, without further ado, my name is Kayla. If, if any of you guys don't know who I am yet, I'm from Maple Wild Marketing. I work with small businesses and creative entrepreneurs in their marketing strategies. Um, just to improve their online presence, whether that be Google, social media, websites, whatever. Um, I've been in the biz now for over six years. Sold my own house on Facebook myself using Facebook ads back in the day. You can ask me more on that later. Um, and But anyways, it's just one of those things where I know it works because I've personally done it myself and I've seen the results. Um, I am not one of those people that is going to tell you to do more, hustle more, and be more. I am all about simplification, being as natural as possible, growing your channels organically, um, and being you online so that other people can really identify with your message and your brand. So right now today, we're gonna go through Facebook and Instagram, and we're gonna look inside, and there's just a couple basics I wanted to cover with you guys um, today. And the first one, let me just make this a little bit bigger. And it'll let me. There we go. Um, the first one that I want to cover today is um, just the building blocks of social success, which is um, you guys have heard me say this time and time again. If you follow me online, is your posts and your account should be all about engaging, entertaining, informing, and attracting people, um, and not just selling. Um, some of the things that are really important when we're talking about insights, when we're talking about your social accounts are if you've set any goals for yourself as a business online. So what are you trying to do with your social media account? Are you trying to get more likes and follows? Are you trying to increase traffic to a storefront awareness or are you trying to sell products or do you just want more people to click through to your website? What is your actual goal and what you're doing online? Um, I want to tell you a lot of people say, oh, sell, 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 but organic posts still have a place. And for those of you who just popped on, if you have questions throughout, just feel free to leave them in the chat and then we're going to go over them at the end. Um, so no question. Don't feel like you can't ask any question, ask any question you want and we'll go through it at the end. Um, organic num reach is the number of people who see your content without paid distribution. A lot of people think that organic content is just kind of like, meh. So, so it doesn't really do anything for you, but I would argue, especially right now, organic content um, still has a place as long as you're keeping it fresh and relevant, there's quality behind it, and you use a mix of media. Um, and that really plays into that whole part of your brand, which is what we talked about last time in the last seminar. I really, really, really love this quote because Talking about insights and everything is great, but if you don't have the backbone behind it, you're not gonna see any of the results that you want to with your insights. And that is who you are, the message that you're projecting to your clients. What's the message that you're trying to send to them? What is the goal that you're trying to accomplish? And it's all encapsulated in this quote right here. 
Um, so first of all, I want to talk to you guys about Instagram a little bit, um, being effective and natural on Instagram. Uh, just a couple quick demographics that I really like to share with people um, are the following and uh, most especially the one where one third of all the stories you daily are from business accounts and how 75.3% of businesses in the U.S. will have an Instagram account in 2020. <laughs> That's huge. And with 500 million active daily users on stories and 200 million people viewing a business profile at least once a day, there's a huge opportunity on Instagram. Um, over a third of all Instagram users have purchased products through the app. Users are 70% more likely to purchase again than non-Instagram users. That's almost 300 million users that have used the app to make a purchase of a product online. And 75% of active users take action on a page, visiting a website, looking at ads, commenting or interacting with a brand of their choice. Those are some pretty huge numbers when you're thinking about the sheer volume of people um, who are interacting on your page and any business page on Instagram. So here's a couple of the common mistakes, okay? So text without line breaks or poor organization that makes it really hard to read, where you have a big chunk of text at the top. Um, and we'll kind of go into that a little bit more. Images that aren't sized properly for your Instagram feed. This one really, really drives me bonkers. Um, because a lot of folks will say, oh, the aesthetic, there's, you know, there's not, it's, it's not a thing anymore. And I run countless polls that say quite the opposite, actually, where people still really like to come to a feed and see that it's laid out well, that the pictures aren't blurry, that they go with um, the message um, and that they're sized properly and not getting cut off. A lot of people, when they come to me, that's one of the first things that I point out to them is, hey, when I go to your Instagram feed, this looks like a mess because all of your corners are all cut off and I can't read that text. Um, posting seven days a week, multiple times per day. That's a thing of the past, okay? Never checking your insights. Go into that in a second. Never responding to comments or DMs. Never spending time building relationships. Spam services like follow for follow, loop giveaways, buy-ins. Um, and Okay, this is not a common mistake. I switched this slide up a little bit. So focusing on organic growth is, is where it's at, is what that should say. And then switching tactics and brand tone every five seconds. Brand tone is like, it would be like me going from talking about marketing to talking about politics. Um, that's a big switch and a big no-no that a lot of people make as a mistake on Instagram. Um, Sorry, I'm going to share it and skip the slide. So your Instagram bio is super duper important, okay? Your name is searchable. So do you see on the screen here where it says Kayla Small Biz Consulting? That is actually searchable. So if you're just using a repeat of your name, okay, odds are your username is already your name, right? So if you're using that space, you're, it's basically wasted space to not use that as a way to draw people in. So like if you were to search small biz consulting, my account would actually pull as one of the accounts that's related to that key phrase, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna think of keywords or descriptors in your niche or in your genre and think of um, like knitting and crocheting if you're a knitter or a crocheter or if you're in consulting, you don't wanna just say consulting, you wanna say small business consulting or um, consulting for creative entrepreneurs. The problem is you have a very small amount of characters to work with there, so you need to be really creative. But that text there where it says Kayla Small Biz Consulting, that is searchable, okay? Um, choosing a relevant category for your business. My category is business consultants. Um, I could have just picked one that was more generic, like marketing, um, but that's not really gonna serve me well, okay? Being incredibly descriptive in who you serve and what you do in your bio. So I help who creative entrepreneurs reinvent their digital marketing strategies, avoid burnout and get their time back. So another big part with this is using a call to action. So mine is schedule your consult, right? Um, or it could be sign up for my free webinar, point down to my link. Um, a lot of the times you will see where people just put like their location 
um, or things like that in the bio. And again, that's wasted space because on the back end of your account, you can actually put Colorado Springs, Colorado in your business information um, and other people will be able to see that and you won't have to put it in your bio and you can use that very limited space and characters in your bio for something else that's very specific and telling people who you are and what you do. Um, having a link in your bio, either pushing them to one specific website or like mine where it's Linktree and you open it and it sends them to several different key locations of my choosing. Um, there's plus and minuses for both and have time to go into those. Um, having branded highlight covers, we talked about this again. Using emojis actually in your bio can help you get rid of space. So like mine originally was, I help creative entrepreneurs reinvent their digital marketing strategies so they can avoid burnout and get their time back to do what they really love to do. That's like my big long one, okay? But <laughs> I was like, there's not enough characters for that. So that's why I said X burnout. And, and I really, I could take a void out and just use the X as the emoji and have even more characters to work with, okay? But use them sparingly because they can be a bit much. Um, a word of caution in your bio, if you have that specialized characters or text, um, that always doesn't translate on other people's devices um, and it can look like a box with a question mark in it. So I always tell people be very careful um, from using those special characters because they don't always work the way that you want them to. Um, and sometimes it can just be more distracting than anything. Um, and then make your profile picture your face, um, unless you're a business that's recognized by your logo. So if you are the person behind the screen like me, I used to have my logo up there until someone made the argument that people wanna know me, they don't care about my logo. And plus your logo gets really small and distorted on Instagram anyways. So it's a great idea to have a picture of your actual face um, as your profile image. Um, okay, so again, your location in your bio is wasted space because you can put it in the back end. There's other things I covered in my story like adding the gift card option by clicking edit profile, action buttons, and select square, cabbage, raise, gifty to set up your gift card options and accounts if you're someone who has the ability to offer gift accounts. If you don't have the ability, you can sign up through Square and all those guys and set that up, especially right now for what we're kind of going through. Might be a great option for you guys. Um, and then checking your public business information on the back end, uh, which is your category, contact options, and profile display. Um, I think what I'll do, since I wasn't actually able to show you guys this on my phone like I wanted to, um, I will send you a series of screenshots and a different PDF file that you can go and access and go through on your own with this later. So just so you know that. And then turning your archive on for your stories is also incredibly important because it allows you to, to go back to the stories um, and save those to your highlights at a later date. So if someone said, hey, I really want that in your did you know highlight, and you don't have your archive on, you can't go back and access those. Um, so like for me, having my archive on and someone asks me that, I can go two weeks back and pull those out and pop them in my highlights so that people can access them easily. Um, so let's talk about Instagram stories while we're on that train. Instagram stories, the trend in 2020 is less posts, more stories, why? Uh, more visibility, real-time marketing, um, and in enhancing your content and learning to have more fun because in 2020, it's all about personalization and really getting to know your customers on a one-to-one -one basis, which is something that Instagram stories provides in a way that your feed posts just cannot do, okay? And you have multiple options in here. You have the ability to geotag your stories, which is that lovely location sticker to just tell people where you are when you're when you're doing that. So if you have a storefront, that could be a really great option. Mentioning another person or business in your stories, which gets you more visibility. Hashtags through sticker or text. Although I will preface this, people say, if you use a hashtag in your stories, you will automatically be put in that hashtag and more people will be your story. That's not true. So that is a common misnomer amongst people. And how that actually works is you have to, and there's no 
specific number of people that have to view your story for this. Like Instagram has not come out and said, you must have 30 people watch your story in the first 15 minutes in order to get this option. Um, however, I have noticed that through my own wonderings with this, that um, the only way that you appear on that hashtag group in the stories, so what'll happen is um, in the hashtag, in discover or whatever, it'll start pulling stories of people who've used that hashtag. Um, and you do have to have a certain amount of views. There's just no number on what that looks like. So it just really depends on your engagement. The higher your engagement and the higher your um, watch rate on stories, which I'll talk about here in a second, um, is the more likely you will be featured in that hashtag group, but there is no guarantee. So all the people who've been spinning you that yarn, it's not true. Um, GIF it, or GIF, however you say it, is to animate your story. There's a lot of different options there. Uh, some of you have the music option. As you can see, I do not. I had it and then it left me. It never came back. Um, the poll, which is a really great, really interactive way to kind of communicate with your customers and get real feedback in real time. The slider bar, again, the dreaded question box where all the bots come in. If you know, you know. Um, and I always tell people if you're having that issue, mix it up a lot more. Use the poll, use the slider bar, use anything other than the question box for a while um, and just kind of keep them guessing. Um, I've had great success with that. Uh, donations now, you can donate to your cause. There's thank you hour. There's going to be support stickers coming in. Um, countdown quiz. These are all really, really, really amazing options for you to have that unique one-on-one -on -one interaction with your followers. As you can tell, I could talk about Instagram stories all day. The key thing here with your insights to watch on your Instagram stories is the following, okay, if you're taking notes. It is paying attention to how many people completely watch your entire story from that day, from start to finish. So do you have an 80% completion rate, a 60% completion rate, 50, 40? That is really going to tell you if what you're saying resonates with folks. That is the insight for you that truly matters. Um, if you start with 50 people and you end with two, you probably need to change how you're doing your stories. Um, even if you start with 50 and you end with 10, that's a key indicator that something's just not quite working or driving with your followers um, and that they're not really loving the content that you're putting out there. Um, something that was super helpful for me in the beginning was though that poll and just constantly getting feedback from people about what I was putting out. Um, story examples, sharing tutorials, tips and ideas, talking of other businesses, highlighting a product or service or using themes or hashtags consistently. So like you could do um, Monday motivation, you could do Wednesday, uh, wellness Wednesday, Technique Thursday, um, Follow Friday. There's so many out there that are kind of like already set in motion for you that it makes your life that much easier when you're trying to come up with content for your stories. All right, let's talk through hashtags really quick here. Um, okay, so relevant hashtags are in-app SEO. If you know what SEO is, SEO is search engine optimization. And that is how people find you. So hashtags are only work well, okay, if you're using more than five per post. So if you're using like two or three hashtags, it's really not gonna do anything for you. Um, note, hashtags only perform well if you're putting out good content. Um, so keeping it on topic, if your content is about business, you wouldn't want to use the knitting hashtag. It kind of doesn't go together. Um, here's some common hashtag mistakes, okay? Using hashtags that don't have anything to do with your post, like I just said. Not diversifying your hashtags enough. So a lot of people use hashtags that are like in the millions and millions of, of posts. So like um, not using long tail hashtags, which very simply means instead of using marketing, you would use um, digital marketing strategy, which is a lot longer and has less views. 
So kind of how I like to think of diversifying is you really don't want to use a lot of the, um, the large hashtags. Okay. So that's anything from 500,000 plus. You really want to stay in the 100,000, 50K, um, 20K, and 10K range because that's where those little micro communities hang out, to borrow a phrase. Um, and that is where you actually find people who are like you. Um, and when you use those huge hashtags, you get lost really fast. So really switching up your hashtags to uh, um, in each post helps you A, avoid a spammy nature, um, and B, it helps with more visibility because if you use the same hashtag group over and over and over and over again, um, it, you wear that group out, okay? And then copying other people's hashtags, just don't do it um, because you're depending on their research when you could have just done your own and knew that you were being successful with the hashtags that you were putting out. Um, and then thinking that hashtags are like the only way that you can grow on Instagram, which is just not true. There's so many other features on your account, like your bio and not posting seven days a week. And all of these things kind of come together in a cumulative effort to make sure that your account is doing what it's supposed to be doing um, and that you are visible on the platform, not just hashtags. Um, also, a lot of folks forget to include their location hashtags. So that's another, another really good thing. But try and steer clear of those hashtag mistakes and really do your research on your hashtags. Um, I always tell people, can create groups so like if I'm trying to talk to specific groups of people like military spouses um, in business or if I'm trying to talk to people who are knitting or people it, this would be a good example if you were wed a wedding photographer and you had a group of engagement photography um, um, like vendors um, trying to think through the off the top of my head um, elopements um, after marriage, like just all these different groups of people, you can create different hashtag groups for, and you can even save them in the notes in your phone so that you can easily copy and paste them into your posts. Um, if you're like me, I use later to just upload them. Geotagging your images is another really huge thing that a lot of people don't do on their accounts. So this has proven time again, and time again, a 79% improvement on the number of local views on your image. So geolocations are gathered from the physical location on your mobile device, which allows users to store or tag their content to those coordinates. So if I'm at a coffee shop, if I'm at the Garden of the Gods, which is local here to Colorado Springs, um, use those geotags. And it's simply by clicking those three dots above your image, um, or you can actually, like my editor, like later, um, sure Buffer and Hootsuite and all those guys allow you to actually add your location in as well. Um, but that's a really, really um, small thing that a lot of people forget to do, and it makes a huge difference. Highlights, again, another huge thing that makes a big difference. Announce new products in your highlights, show us in your shop, communicate giveaways and contests, create informative shoppable content, um, complement or even replace your blog is that one of my favorites. A lot of people don't even think about that. Um, and uh, using unique covers from Canva or Adobe Spark. I always tell people, think of your highlight covers like an extension of your website. Um, and really that's what they're there for, um, to pull people in and capture their attention and help them get to know you and have information that they can refer back to later, just like your website. Um, Instagram Live. Who here has been inundated by Instagram Lives lately? <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's been crazy. So one of the big things I constantly see with Instagram lives is that people don't prepare beforehand. They don't promote them beforehand. They just go. And then they're like, oh, I don't know why anybody, nobody came to my live today. And I'm like, so you have to tell people when you're going live. Uh, same thing goes on Facebook. A lot of people don't ever tell people or promote their lives. They just go live and then ask people to watch the replay. Lives are about being able to interact with your community. Um, so do things like launching new products, teasing new products, flash sales, collecting emails even you can do through Instagram Live. Um, be consistent with your live schedule. So if you decide, I'm gonna go live once a week, do that. 
It's just like Instagram stories. You have to be super consistent with it to start seeing results. Engage your audience. If you need to create an outline, do a test video um, without even going live, just record one on your phone so you can start to get comfortable with the camera. Start small. Don't try and go live for 30 minutes. No one's gonna watch that long of a session anyways. And then reward them for coming. Give them an incentive for coming. Um, either a downloadable piece of content or um, something that you come up with that's creative and goes with your brand. Um, it's a lot for people to take the time out of their day to hop on your live. So um, make sure to reward them and make sure to let them know when it's actually happening so that they can be there and interact with you. Um, IGTV is just the long form video content. You guys know that you can now add a series just like YouTube, which is kind of fun. You can create tutorials, host a Q&A, go behind the scenes, stream an event, host a talk show. I like to tell people this could be a great compliment to a podcast. Um, cross promote, use captions, which lot, not a lot of people are doing. Um, you can use an app like Clipomatic to kind of help just create those captions for you. Um, and then brand it and make it so that it looks like it's part of your brand, okay? So after you get through all of that, okay, what do the metrics actually mean? So, oops, excuse me, I'm going, getting ahead of myself. So reach um, is the potential unique viewers a post could have in its lifetime. Impressions is how many times a post shows up in someone's timeline. So if you've been on your timeline and maybe you've seen somebody's post more than one time, that would technically count as an impression. So if you get in your insights on the back end, sometimes you'll see like 1.3 impressions, especially on Facebook. And that just means that on average, that person saw it more than one time in their timeline. Um, but reach is one viewer one time. So um, honestly, of the two, uh, I like to choose impressions because it's just somebody coming back and seeing your product again and again when you're looking at um, when you're looking at a calculation, which I'll show you shortly. Engagement here, though, is the most important thing that you need to pay attention to on Instagram. That's your likes, comments, saves, or shares, um, plus your account mentions. So the engagement of of anything you see and any metric. The engagement piece is the most important piece because that's how Instagram's algorithm weighs you against other accounts. Um, so what do these mean on the back end on demographics, right? Um, so when you go in the back end of your account and how you access this is um, by tapping on your profile. And if you're like me, you have up here at the top the however many people visited you in a seven day window, okay? If you click there, you're gonna see content activity and audience, okay? If you go into audience and scroll through that page, you're gonna see all of these fun graphs and information. Um, and this is the types of people who are following you. You can see when they're online, um, you can see the locations that you're pulling from the most, and you can see the age range. So you can see here that I have 76% women and 24% men. Um, and that um, on Mondays, the best time for me to post looks like it's 3 p.m. Okay, but then I have a pretty sharp drop off at 6. So for me, I always tell people if you see a drop off after 3 p.m., um, I like to post several hours earlier than that so that my post has time to get seen before the drop off happens. So a lot of people will get on their insights and they'll say, oh gosh, like I need to post right at three. But by the time four o'clock rolls around, because I can't see between the window of three and 6 p.m., I could have already had, you know, 20 people drop off from what I could have had an hour earlier. So, and 20 people makes a big difference when you're talking about engagement, right? So get it, get into the back end and kind of look and see who's following you. You might be surprised by men versus women, um, what hours of the day, which days of the week, because like you can see Mondays, I could scroll through and see Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and then um, on the days you can see over there, and I have a really unfortunate number on Friday, 
but probably Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are my best days to post. And right now I'm currently posting Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, so it really kind of shows you, and this, this is not something that's just going to be consistent forever. This is something that changes on a monthly basis as you add more followers to your account. So you need to get in here and check this on a monthly basis. Okay, just like the age range of people who are following you, you can see the most amount of people who follow me are 25 to 44 year olds. So like if I was gonna run an ad, this tells me a lot of information, right? Um, getting into your content insights, you can really get in here in the back and start to see on each individual post and your posts overall, how things are performing for you. So you can start to see what's relating with people, what's not relating with people, how your hashtags are performing, et cetera. Um, you can see here 64% of the people on this specific post, and that's the master your strengths, outsource to your weaknesses, that, that they weren't even following me, but that they saw it. Um, and that eight people went and visited my profile and did who knows what on there. Um, you can see it's pulling my location because it's geotagged. So that's three views I wouldn't have had if I didn't use. And, and sometimes I've had like upwards of 15 to 20 on location. Um, and other is from other people sharing, et cetera. So do you see how it says all one year in reach? You can change all of those drop downs and you'll see select interaction there. So you can see the engagement, you can see the follows, you can see the get directions. But what I like to do is get in here and change the one year to 30 days and then to impressions um, so that I can see which of my posts are performing the best for me um, within the last 30 days. And it really helps me to know um, how my content is performing on a monthly basis. Um, and I actually, it helps me know what I need to do more of. So like my best performing posts in the last 30 days was me talking about bighorn sheep in, in the Garden of the Gods. Okay, so maybe people aren't really identifying with like the heavy, hard hitting stuff right now because my next one is about me talking about my own personal struggles with what's going on right now, okay? Um, and then, oh, I just clicked into someone's live again. And then the one after that is me being wild about plants. So funnily enough, it's not any of my my graphics and my super heavy hitting uh, post versus three weeks ago where you saw this scene happening with all of the graphics and all of the things that like kind of like the, the like the meat and potatoes of marketing. So it's really interesting to see and kind of go back through what people are resonating with right now currently and being that I am a real-time marketing person I can then adjust my message um, going forward so that I am kind of hitting those things instead of what I, you know, what I want to talk about, which is marketing. Um, knowledge is power, okay? So you know after going through your insights, who is following you, what times of day they're online, which day of the week they're online, and what posts are resonating with them. If you want to keep improving, you need to start tracking your engagement on a monthly basis. So this is what I use, okay, and you guys are going to get this. Um, engagement rate is likes plus comments divided by impressions times 100, and it tells you your engagement rating on Instagram. Um, I'm going to send you um, kind of like the breakdown, but typically for an account that's between 0 and 5K, your engagement rate is anywhere from 5 to 8%. It can fluctuate because you can't possibly take into account all or have pulled all the accounts on Instagram to know what the exact percentage is. Okay, so disclaimer there. Um, but these are the two most commonly accepted methods to calculate your engagement. And what I do is I take my posts from the last 30 days and doing that, and then I put them and I add up all the likes, I add up the comments, and I add up all the impressions on each image. Um, and then I put them into this calculation. So yay, math, you didn't go to school for it, but you get to do it in cooking and marketing and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and what this really tells you is, hey, if your engagement rate is like 0.2%, it 
in February and, you know, um, 1.5%, you made a huge leaps and bounds from 30 days later, right? Um, and you're doing this in a way, you're not just plugging it into somebody's like online um, engagement calculator like Plank, it's T-H-A-L-N-X, I believe, or Triber um, is T-R-I-B-E-R-R. -R. Um, those are both like engagement calculators where you can just put in your username and they'll calculate it for you. This is way more accurate because it takes all of your likes, all of your comments, and um, the more accurate is to add your saved um, posts in there as well. And again, just by going back, just by going back to that part in the middle and changing that drop down in reach, that is how you are able to end end the year from a year to thirty days. That's how you're able to see all of that information and then to plug it into this calculation just by doing a little bit of math. Additional insight details that not a lot of people know. It takes 19 hours to even see 50% of the total lifetime engagement on your post. So if you put a post up and an hour later, you're like, I only have five likes, what the heck? Okay, wait until 19 hours later to actually tell yourself whether or not that post is performing properly. Also, if Instagram is telling you this post is performing better than 80% of your other posts, it's taking into account your total lifetime engagement on your other posts and comparing it to the current engagement you're receiving on the new post on your page. Um, as a lot of people like to say, and I've seen this happen so many times where people are like, I don't know why Instagram's telling me this crap. This is not performing better than my other post. Okay. What it's doing is simply stacking it up against the engagement you received on every other post that you've ever done on your page and compared to the current engagement. And sometimes you'll see in a day or two that that will disappear because it's no longer relevant. But in the beginning, it's kind of like, um, if you kind of compare one of those uh, graphs and they go like this and then they start going like this, but you don't see it until 19 hours later, if that makes sense. So your post could be actually outperforming the one that you thought was the better post, um, but really overall they start to do this. Um, that is what Instagram is doing um, when they're saying this post is performing better than 80%. And a lot of people get annoyed because they think that Instagram is just trying to make them run ads, which may be true. Um, however, I just want you guys to understand what's happening behind the scenes when Instagram is actually telling you that. And not to get discouraged because 19 hours is 19 hours and that's 50%. And that total lifetime engagement is once you put it up and then however long it's on your page. So you, you and I both know we're still getting likes and comments on posts that we posted about four months ago. Um, and that is all included in the lifetime engagement. Okay, so that's Instagram. I gotta keep rolling here. Facebook, okay, so, um, and Lauren, I will, I'll go over that here at the end. Okay. Um, but yeah, I see, I see your question, girl. So user data on Facebook's a little bit different. Um, it's interesting to note, that's supposed to say note, that the growth on Facebook has not increased in the last three years. It has stayed the same. The platform with the most growth is actually Instagram. Hmm, strange. Um, you'll notice too that a lot of the user data is changing here. Um, and there's a lot more people in the um, 50 to 64% that are online that didn't used to be there. Um, sorry, water. Some of the other key things just to take note, seven in 10 adults in the US use Facebook. That's crazy. 96% of those users prefer mobile usage. 86% um, of marketers use Facebook for their ad campaigns. Right now, if you missed my last webinar, ad campaigns are a lot cheaper right now um, for us small folks because a lot of the large advertisers aren't actually using ads on Facebook right now. Um, and that is simply because uh, they aren't open. So uh, it could be advantageous for those of us who are small business owners to boost a post or run an ad campaign right now simply because it's cheaper and our money will go a lot further right now because there are less people using the platform 
because 86% of people that of marketers is that's a, a large field of competition and it makes it really difficult to stand out on Facebook because there's so many ads all the time. I know you guys already know that. Um, okay. Facebook page best practices. Okay. Filling everything out. The about section is very important. Um, if you don't have an about section, it's really important to go in your settings. Um, and this is actually something I can show you. Um, if my computer will let me. So this is something I can actually show you on your page. Um, if you guys can see this, put your hands up. Okay, good. Um, so in your actual settings on your page, so not your settings up here in the blue bar, the settings in your page, okay? What you need to do is go to templates and tabs. If you do not see an about section on your page currently, it's probably because you have the wrong template picked. Um, so it could be because you're on standard or whatever. This is what I'm talking about. My page will load. Um, don't fail me now. I love slow internet. Wait for it. Okay. So this is what I'm talking about. This is actually how Facebook uses my device. That's doing all this paperwork and it was super complicated and frustrating and quite frankly, just mind bogglingly dumb that Facebook has now switched it. You can no longer verify your business page for the little gray check mark. Um, and now they view this as your verification as a legit business. So if you don't see this story and you don't see a lot of this information, I would encourage you to get in your settings and go to templates and tabs and really check those out and make sure that you have the right template picked for yourself um, and that you fill out all of this information, have this little green check mark next to your email, making sure that you've verified your email account and put as much information in this portion as you possibly can. Um, because again, the algorithm favors those who use the app, utilize the app fully. Um, okay, so using images size specifically for Facebook, your cover image versus your profile picture versus your feed post. Those are all different sizes, which is super great fun. However, if you use an app like Canva, those are already pre-sized for you. All you have to do is click Facebook cover and it's automatically gonna pull the image. I will say on your cover image, and I know I'm talking really fast, I'm trying to get through all this. On your cover image, it is very, very important to center your text. Um, so anything that you put on the left versus, that was the right. Anything you put on the left versus the right is gonna get cut off on a mobile device, okay? Um, it won't get cut off on a desktop, but on a mobile device, those edges will get cut off um, because your screen is smaller. So any text that you do use on your cover image, like mine is simple, natural, um, effective, that's all in the middle because I want people on a mobile device to be able to read it as well. Um, same thing on Instagram, focusing on quality over quantity, same thing. Um, getting into your insights to see the best time of day to post and your engagement rate, responding to all of your reviews and asking people for more because your reviews on Facebook are super important, just like they are in Google. They're not as important as Google, but they're still very important um, because people use Facebook as yet another way to kind of, kind of check you out before they buy with you or use any of your products or services. Look for ways you can go live or incorporate more video on your feed if you don't wanna go live, just simply recording a video and uploading it. Um, listing your services, Posting photos to your albums and starting conversations is really important on Facebook as well. And keeping a consistent voice and feel to your feed that's cohesive with your brand. Having more than one admin, which again, you're gonna need to go in your settings for and choose um, page roles. And what you wanna do is you'll wanna get in here and assign a new page role and either keep them as an editor or switch them to an an admin. I always tell people, please have at least two admins on your business page because I've seen time and time again where people have gotten locked out and can no longer access their pages. 
So um, it automatically defaults to editor. Um, and what will happen is a lot of times people think, well, an admin, what does that actually do? So this is simply a way to safeguard your account. Um, even if you put your husband on here, which is, you know, who mine is, um, is my other admin. But what I have seen is if you just have an editor and another admin and the admin gets locked out, um, it makes it very difficult to retrieve anything on that page. And then you have to go through the rigmarole of getting in touch with Facebook and doing all of the things to try and get your account back under your control. If you have two admins, the page just floats to whoever is the admin on your account. So if you get locked out and your husband's still your admin, your page is safe um, because he can, he can get back in there and you can do what you need to do until you can get back on your personal account. If for whatever reason, your personal account has something happen to it, like it gets hacked or whatever. Um, so that admin is very, very important, okay? Um, and then what was the other thing I said? Having a call to action on your page here on the front is very important too. Just like Instagram, there are buttons here at the tippy top right under, under your cover image where you can choose what you want them to do, um, whether it's book contact with you, learn more about your business, shop with you, um, or join your community. There's so many options in here. So make sure that you have a button and make sure that you're pushing them somewhere that you want them to go. The links work and everything is um, working properly with it. And, um, and just so that people can go somewhere and have something to do on your page that's specific to what you want them to do. That's a really long-winded version of what I was trying to say. Um, okay, keeping moving. So what do the metrics mean on here again? It's the same thing as Instagram. So we're not gonna go through all of that again. And just like Instagram, the most important thing on here is your engagement, believe it or not. Um, so some of the things that are really good to take into note are your page summary. And I'll go through and show you how to access this once I go through it. So these you can change for like one month, two months. I was running an ad, so a lot of these numbers are like grossly inflated. Um, so kind of ignore them. But it really gives you an idea of how many new people are coming to your page through page likes, how many people you're reaching, what your engagement looks like, how your videos are doing, how many people even like briefly saw your page um, and, and all of those things. And again, you can change the, the, um, the, the range on those. And that's simply by going into your insights. And it's the very first page. So again, up here at the tippy top, you can change this to yesterday last seven days or last 28 days. And as you can see, numbers are grossly inflated from my ads. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. And that's a great place to start in the beginning just to kind of get a quick recap of how your account's doing. Again, I like to do 30 days just like Instagram. Um, something that I do in here as well is I go into, um, I go into the back end just like I would on Instagram to see how my posts are doing on a um, on a monthly basis, and this is by just viewing viewing here. And let's just see if I can briefly show you this. So this is this page, this posts page right here on the left, and all of these perform different functions, and we'll go through um, a few of them that are the most important to me. Again. Just like Instagram, I can see when people are online and when the best times of day to post on Facebook would be. So if I'm trying to put out a Facebook specific post, this is where I would come to see when I should maybe post that and what day of the week uh, would be the best. Down here, I can change all of these to tell me, hey, and again, remember, remembering the difference between reach and impressions, um, I can view um, different different post clicks, reactions, comments, and shares, and I can change all of this too. And the one that I like to really go to, if I was going to go to one and pick any one of these, is my engagement rate. Um, and this actually tells me my engagement rate per post. And what I would do is I would go back to the beginning of the month per post, and I would add all of these up and I would take the average of those as my engagement rate on Facebook. So it's a little bit different than the Instagram calculation because it builds the percentage 
right into your post here just by switching it to engagement rate. Um, you could you could go back and do um, and go back through here and, and choose a different option and choose like impressions um, and then choose you know reactions, comments, and shares. And you could add up all of these. But why bother when you just have the engagement rate that you can take the average of on a monthly basis to kind of track your progress on your insights? Um, now I'm going really fast. I'm sorry, you guys. So another one in here I really like to show people is pages you watch. Pages you watch can really help you see and get inspiration for what people are doing in a business like yours. So you can look them up. And what it does is it holds them right here, top posts from pages you watch. And I can look and see what their engagement is like and what they're posting about and how often they're posting. Um, and you can add, I think you can add as many pages as you want, but it's really helpful to just kind of come in here and see what other people are doing and use it as inspiration, not as something to actually copy, FYI, but as inspiration for my own posts and and what other people are vibing with. For example, this one's not doing so hot, okay? But this one is. So I can kind of gauge, again, it's the more lighthearted posts versus the heavy hitters, which is kind of what I'm feeling on Instagram. So it really tells me a lot of information. Um, page views, I'm not gonna click back to these, but um, who knew I would be getting clicks to my Facebook page from Yahoo or Bing? Like, what is that? Interestingly, I have quite a few clicks from Google to my Facebook page. This tells me I should post on Google more and focus more effort on posts there to drive traffic to my Facebook page. And again, you can change the date range. So I have like a year on this to really see what is pulling. I'll show you guys all this um, in a second um, after I go through this. Actions on page um, can tell you a lot about the particular call to action you're directing people to. So if you have like a phone number or a website clicks, which is what I had up in my call to action button, um, this is where you can see how that, how that is performing, which makes sense because I launched my website back in October. So this can tell you how to change and where they're heading to from your page. For example, I can see they're heading to my website, what am I posting where they're heading to my site? Can I post more of it? Or could I run an ad that would accompany their action? Like, can I run an ad that encourages people to click through to my website? Um, things like that are really great things to think through. And again, we talked about best times of day to post. According to Hootsuite, the best times of um, Facebook is between 12 and 3 p.m. on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But this is more accurate. So you can listen to people like that and post then, or you can get into your own insights and see when your people are online. Um, okay, and posts, again, this tells you what is the most popular type of post on your page. So for me, video is the most important, uh, is the most popular type of post on my page, second to photo, shared videos, and links. Um, again, I ran an ad, so this is a little bit inflated. But that is post types here. Um, and that is where you would access that information. Um, actions on page is just the tab above. That's what we went through. And again, you can change all of these date ranges here up at the top to see all of this good information that we just talked about in the last couple of slides. Your events um, also tell you a lot about who is responding. Um, this is for a webinar that I taught in New York, and I was a co-host on it, and um, and it just told me a lot of good things about the topic um, and how many people were really resonating with it. Um, and I think this was only after um, about a week of having that event out there that I took this screenshot. So the back end of your events insights can really tell you a lot of good juicy information too. Video. Um, you can get in the back end of your posts. Facebook users are four times more likely to watch live streams than recorded videos. Don't know if you guys know that. Um, creating a consistent schedule, using content you created previously, a YouTube video and IGTV you can do. Again, including captions and thinking mobile first, because again, it's 65, 
plus percent of people who are coming to Facebook are doing so on a mobile device, which means that your stuff needs to be geared towards mobile view. So that's shorter videos, um, more interactive, um, and is properly sized for the mobile first screen, which is the vertical view. Um, people, this is a really great spot to come and look on Facebook because you can see the people who you have reached um, or your fans versus the people you have reached. So these are the people who are actually following you. And these are the people down here who have been reached by your page, whether somebody shared it, um, shared a post you did, or just clicked on your page briefly, but don't actually follow you. And these numbers can fluctuate. So you can see this is pretty on par with my Instagram, right? Like it's right on the nose. But the people I'm reaching are slightly different. So if I was building an ad out, for example, I wouldn't want to necessarily just look at these numbers. I would want to look at these numbers too. Um, and notice here, I have more, I have a lot of more 65 plus as my fans, but way, way, way less um, in the people that I'm actually reaching. So my ads campaign, I would really want to stick close to here versus here where I'd be like, maybe I'd be tempted to go to 55 or even 65 plus with an ad. But this is telling me, and this is telling me that I really wouldn't be a waste of my money. So my insights really, really tell me the reality of who is actually following me versus who I think is following me. Because if I thought about it, I would tell you these numbers and not these numbers down here. Um, and again, that is just by accessing this tab right here. And you can see your fans, your followers, people reached and people engaged. And that one's obviously unavailable. But um, it tells you even right down to um, the languages of the people who are coming to my page and the exact location. So if I was running an ad, again, this would be a really great way for me to say, oh, maybe I push one out to um, Aurora, Fort Collins, Pueblo, Greeley, Grand Junction, and Boulder, because there's people there who my stuff is reaching um, that I had no clue about. So um, that's really good information for you to know as a business owner. And finally, Facebook groups, okay? Just a couple key things in here in your Facebook group is to, if you have one, make your rules and expectations super clear. Prioritize discussion amongst your group followers. Let your group know that you're listening by not talking too much. Um, obviously you can talk in there, but don't be the only voice on your group. And not dropping too many links or spam. Um, emphasize ex exclusivity with a closed group, um, which is what I have. So it kind of makes people feel like they're, they're in like this one time only group versus like having an open and public group. There's a different feel to it. Um, optimizing your Facebook group and content for engagement. So again, really asking questions, um, getting involved with what people are doing, asking them for feedback. Again, it's all about that conversational piece and experimenting with different posts and content formats formats, video, regular text, images, um, things like that, live. And then you can search your conversations on the group once you kind of get conversations going for common questions and pain points that your customers are, ha are having. Um, and then like me, I like to promote my group on Instagram and, and my regular Facebook page, um, LinkedIn, um, and my blog because all of that drives traffic to my group. Um, your group, um, you can set it up and you can have um, different tabs in there. So if you have like a social learning group where they can actually go through different units, um, if it's just a discussion only, um, there's a lot of different types of groups where uh, you can really kind of slice out the information so it's organized and really easy to follow. Um, and this could be something that maybe after you get all of your other Facebook and you kind of are comfortable with your insights, you're comfortable with posting, maybe Facebook groups are something that you do down the road. Like if you don't want to get into building an email list or any of those things. Um, and it's interesting to note that right now with everything that's going on, Facebook groups are actually one of the highest performing things on Facebook 
private Facebook groups because it's communities of people who are able to come together alongside each other in this most recent trial and have kind of like a sounding board and a group where they can go and feel like they're in a community because they don't have, you know, they're at home alone um, talking to a screen all the time. So it's, it's nice to be able to have that sense of community and togetherness in a Facebook group. And it's different than having to hop on a Zoom call or using technology and it's a share and share alike kind of situation. Um, so it should feel like an experience extension of your community on your other channels, if that makes sense. And I know maybe a lot of you aren't quite ready to have a Facebook group or um, it's not really your thing, but it is something, you know, like down the road might be a good idea for you guys to think through and think how you'd at least want to set it up and what you would at least want to put in your group. Um, I know for myself, I run challenges through groups. Um, and I'm just now getting kind of like my community group up off the ground. Um, so it can perform a wide variety of functions for you as a business owner. Um, and finally, the wrap up here is your insights are invaluable assets for your business success. There's a lot here that can be done over a span of time. I think a lot of people think, oh my gosh, like that's so much. Like, how can I possibly do that? Okay. It's, it's, bite-sized pieces. It's not like me. I've been doing this for a long time. And so for me, this is like, oh yeah, I just do that. Right. Um, but I know for some of you guys, that's like a lot of time and effort and energy that, you know, take a small piece of that. So maybe it's just, you start paying attention to your content insights right now. Maybe it's that you start paying attention to your, your engagement rate right now and see how maybe you can improve that in the next 30 days by, you know, or maybe it's just you take and you think, how do I want to rewrite my bio? Um, just taking really small pieces instead of trying to take off this massive, you know, chunk because it doesn't, it's progress, not perfection, right? I'm still over here, still waiting through a lot of this stuff myself. And the thing is, is it's constantly changing, right? So I don't want you guys to get overwhelmed in the, in the pursuit of your insights that you feel like you're behind or that you should have been doing X, Y, or Z, okay? You have time to implement this and grow your account well. And it starts by giving yourself grace and freedom to ask for help where and when you need to. Um, and to realize that taking bite-sized pieces is way better than just trying to drag the whole piece of pie. Um, and I have quite a few resources for you um, at the end for you guys. Um, right now, I want to open it up to questions. Um, we have a, a, had at least one so far. If you have um, questions, go ahead and type them in the chat right now. And um, but basically, I wanted to just tell you guys, um, you will be getting a little mini audit for both your Facebook and your Instagram accounts for you guys to kind of go through on your own and kind of ask yourself some of these questions that I went through on your insights and then like the back end of your account. Um, I will be putting together kind of like that screenshot information um, so that you guys can look through exactly what I was talking about today since I couldn't get on this dang thing and show you. <laughs> Um, so that you can later go back through my presentation and see it. This will be recorded and it will be uploaded to YouTube as well for your reference. Um, but for right now, okay, so Lauren asked about that whole, does this, the whole 80%, this post is performing 80% better than your other post. It says, or she says, does that mean we should promote through when it is performing better or no. So I always tell people when you put a post out, let it marinate for a couple of days. Because again, remember, you're waiting for this sliding scale to kind of to kind of have this crossroads, okay? And you can't see that for at least a couple of days on either Facebook or Instagram. Um, it's kind of like um, kind of like waiting for bread to rise. If you, um, 
punch the dough down too soon, I'm gonna totally mess this up. Um, if you punch the dough down too soon, your bread is not going to rise in the oven properly. It's the same thing with, um, with your ads. If you try and run an ad before the post has really collected the amount of engagement that it needs to um, and the amount of information that you need to have in order to run an ad, um, your ad might not perform as well. So what you need to do is wait a couple days and see how well that post has actually performed. Because again, remember I said that that little tagline, you'll notice after a couple days, it just kind of goes away. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, well, that's just because like I have new posts now. Well, that's true. You can still see, like I can go in my insights right now on Instagram and I can tell you by looking at my content um, from a whole year, I have posts and I'm scrolling down because I have posts like this one. It's the success, um, success is neither magical nor mysterious. I put that one out March 25th and I, it had that little, this post is performing 80% better than your other posts. Um, however, it's like middle of the pack and down, um, you know, and that was maybe six days after I posted it. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying like wait like a week before you promote something, but at least give it the full 24 to 48 hours before you decide to do anything with it so that you can actually see what that engagement is going to look like um, long term. Okay, does that, does that help? Lauren, um, Sadell is asking, can you go over the best way to use hashtags on Instagram stories again? Also a link to your new group. Yes, I will send you guys a link to my new group here in just a second. So the best way to use hashtags on Instagram stories. So you can use hashtags on Instagram stories. Um, I would again, recommend that you use those long tail hashtags. So not marketing, not anything like that. Use the smaller ones. So like digital marketing strategies or um, small business love or something like that. So it's longer and more targeted. But I will tell you um, that there is no guarantee that you will be showing up in that hashtag group just simply because it really depends on your engagement level on your Instagram story. So what's really important, first of all, is to watch how, how many people are following through your entire series on Instagram stories. So are they watching it all the way from the beginning to the end? Um, how many people start paying attention to how many people watch it within the first 30 minutes? So if you have, if you only have like one or two people who watch that story in the first 30 minutes, odds are that you're not going to pull in that hashtag group. If you have 10 plus every time within the first 30 minutes to an hour of you posting, because that's kind of the most important engagement window, um, sidebar to that, don't go away because I need to tell you guys something really important. Um, and then we'll wrap this up. Um, so any of you who have any other questions, let me know. Um, where was I? So the most important thing to know is that kind of watch through rates um, and then noticing how many people are watching you within the first 30 minutes to an hour on a regular basis because that that will help you appear in those hashtag groups on discover or whatever um, in your feed um, nine to ten times more than just posting like and again, I can't give you an exact number of how many people need to watch because they're, I've read all the forums, I've poured over things, and it's very difficult to put an exact number on, on that kind of kickback from your stories. So I would just say pay attention to those two things um, and, and hopefully you'll start getting featured on, on the hashtag groups. But um, it's better to start using it on a regular basis, like using those hashtags and, um, and doing those things. Just know in the back of your head that it's not necessarily true that you will get featured in those groups until 
Instagram deems that you have enough people engaging with you and viewing your stories in a certain amount of time. Um, and I know that sounds really like, uh, like wishy-washy and it is because Instagram is unfortunately. Um, and there's no clear directive on that. Um, but just in what I've noticed in things, that is just the case. Another huge important thing I wanted to mention really quick with engagement on your posts. Uh, if you've never been told this before, do not edit your posts after the first five minutes that you have posted your post on, on your um, Instagram feed. If you edit your post after the first five minutes, it will actually start your engagement over. I'm going to repeat that. Don't edit your post five minutes after you have posted it. So if you have to make any edits, do it in the first five minutes because after five minutes, say you have saves and comments and likes, it will be like those never happened and it won't actually track that information. It will reset it. Um, and it will then only pick up the people who commented, liked, saved that image or post after your edit. Does that make sense? Um, so it's super, super important um, not to edit your post after that. Um, and a lot of people don't know that and they're like, wait, what? And when I first started, I didn't know that. And somebody told me. Um, and so very, very important, just don't do that. Um, do we have any other questions before I let you guys go for the day? I'll wait for a minute and see if you guys have any other questions. Kayla, do you have a question? Can you type it into the chat box? Oh, she's good. Okay, if you guys are all good, can you just raise your hands really quick so I know there's no more questions? Awesome. Well, guys, again, um, I am going to be putting this on YouTube. You're getting resources and an email that's going to come to you after this um, through the email that you provided when you registered. And um, I will be including screenshots of what I talked about today so you can kind of follow along. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, if you have something that's more detailed and kind of more like you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one about it, reach out after, and I will also send you the link to my group um, so that you guys have access to that. But thank you so much for coming today. I appreciate all of you. You guys are awesome. You're doing awesome things. And um, hopefully I will see you again soon. I'll talk to you guys later.